Hugo Salinas Price is one of the most respected businessmen in Mexico. He was the CEO, the, 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 the director general of Electra, one of the most important retail companies in Mexico for many years. But over the past few decades, uh, he retired from Electra and he has actually dedicated most of his time to fight for real money. Uh, money that, that is made of silver, money that is made of gold, uh, money that is not the fake money that we're used to having uh, w whenever we, we use print money. In fact, Don Hugo, I have some, have some bills here. And uh, this is paper. This is paper, this is paper that is printed on plastic. Why is it worth anything if it's just printed paper? Why is it worth something? Well, because of its ancestry. The value it has comes down to it through the years from the, from the time when a peso was a coin like this one. But that's real money. And this, this is, is real money. So the first thing that happened was that uh, bills were, were printed uh, for a value of, value of several of these, let's say five pesos. I remember them as a child. Five pesos, 10 pesos, 20 pesos, 50 pesos, 100 pesos. That was a lot of money, 100 mm -hmm. pesos. And I wonderfully remember my father gave my mother a Christmas present of a, a thousand peso bill. Yeah, that those was, bills that was were very generous. <laughs> very generous at the time. She was very happy. So those bills were redeemable in silver. If I wanted, if I, if I had a certain, you know, if, if I have some printed pesos, I could go, you to, could a go bank to the bank and, and, get, and, some and get your silver. Of course, the, the banks discouraged that. They didn't but, like they, it. but it was possible to do that. And we had these bills. The, these, this, this, these coins were in circulation from the time, from, uh, from about 1923 to 1945, a period of uh, remarkable monetary stability. By the way, the silver in this one peso coin was not worth one peso. No, the coin was worth one peso, but the silver in the coin was not worth one peso. The, the coin, that silver in the coin were, was at the most 50 centavos, uh, a half. And it went down when price of silver collapsed back in the 30s. It went down to almost 17 cents or 20 cents, but the, the coin resisted uh, and nobody paid any attention to it. The peso was a peso and was accepted as a peso, and that was its value, until 1945. What happened in 1945? Well, there was a great inflation of the money supply in the United States, and silver became more expensive. And so when silver rose to a value that was the same as, a, as the content of silver in this coin, well, then it ceased to be money, and all these coins were hoarded by the banks and sent to the refineries and were melted down because they were worth more as silver ingots, as silver bullion, than they were as coins. So that shows you that for a coin, a silver coin, to circulate against paper money, it has to have a superior value, has to be worth more than what the silver in the coin is worth. In your book, Dinero Falso, you, you suggest that there might be a way in which we can recover the real money, the yes. silver money, the, the well, gold money. How can we do that? Well, I keep on thinking about these damn things. And the obstacle is, of course, is the obstinacy of the central bank. The central bank is only half Mexican maybe less than half. Most, most two-thirds of it is internationalism. The central bank is part of a worldwide mafia of central banks, and they can't do anything that the, that the great mafia does not approve, because 
They, don't, they want to be part of the great mafia and not just an independent central bank. And so they don't want to know anything about silver. <clears throat> I've, I've tried for years to, to discuss with them. It's fruitless, fruitless. They will not listen to anything that has to do with real money. They, only, they are part of the fake money crowd. Okay. So now we have a president that is doing a good job. He hasn't in, devalued in, in the Mexico. he hasn't devalued the paper peso. So good for him. So I'm thinking, well, what if I went to him and told him how you can you can monetize silver very quietly without making a big fuss. All you have to do is go is call your your uh, finance minister finance minister the one that collects the taxes mm -hmm. and tell him his name is arturo and tell him look arturo i want you to do this and i want it by monday morning you're going to issue an a uh, notice that the the, the uh the treasury the mexican treasury which you had, will accept in payment of taxes this coin or fractions of this coin at a monetary value of 25% uh, over the value of the silver contained in this. So if the silver <clears throat> in the coin is worth 500 pesos on Monday and 25% is is a, a quarter that's a 125 you're going to say you'll accept the payment of taxes in silver at six with this coin at the value of 625 pesos and or fractions of it proportionately lower value because there are fractions of these coins so and I, I and your central bank is going to your, your finance minister is going to say, but I'm going to get full of silver. What am I going to do with so much silver? And the reply is, you're not going to get a single ounce of silver because nobody's going to be so stupid as to pay their taxes in silver. They're going to, going to take pesos to, as usual to pay you, but they're going to buy silver and keep silver because it now has a monetary value. And you are the one that is giving it to them because you're the one that is stipulating at what value you receive the silver. So that's the monetization of silver. And you didn't have to go through the Congress. You went directly through your finance minister and had it done. And you didn't even call it a, a, a revaluation of silver or anything else. Very quietly, you just say, well, we accept these coins in payment of taxes. And that's that. And if anybody says you're about revaluing the silver, you say, no, 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 we're just making it easier for people to pay in silver if they want to pay in silver. So you don't, have, the, you don't have to change the law to actually give value to, to the uh, silver coin. You don't have to change the law. We don't have to change the law. No, we don't I have don't to think, go to Congress. I don't think you have to do anything. The Secretary of the Treasury can say, you can pay me in turkeys if you want to pay me in turkeys. Mm -hmm. So what? Why, why is it so important, Don Hugo? Why is it so important to... Uh, to promote the use and savings in silver or in gold. Well, look at the United States. They're now making, a, they're putting a program together on top of what Mr. Trump did. Now they're wanting 1.9 million million dollars. And then there's another one coming for 4 million million dollars. You know what that is? That's the end of the dollar. Forget it. There's a, all these sermons and, and, and wise guys talking about the, this is the end of the dollar. The United States is in a revolutionary situation and they're printing money like crazy because they're trying to stifle or keep down the forces of revolution. The United States, I'm sorry to say, is a failed state and this is, are the end times. I don't know what on earth we're going to see, but that's what's coming. And at that 
seeing that and they are our neighbors, it would be a good thing. As we say in Spanish, when you see your neighbor's whiskers being shaved, start, start wetting down your own beard because we're going to have severe consequences here and we might as well start saving in silver and gold while we can. What's your recommendation to people? What should they be doing in order to save, in order to prepare Do you for know tough Americans? Times? I know Americans. Well, mm -hmm. they, are, they have lots of, of good people, lots of them, who are all saying what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm with them. Get a hold of gold and silver as soon as you can and get as much as you can and save it and put it away and don't breathe a word about it because it's going to be dangerous to you if it's known that you have it. So you're in a revolutionary situation, get your gold and silver and put it away and keep your mouth shut. Don Hugo Salinas Price, thank you very much for this conversation. I guess I've said enough. You Thanks said a lot. Quite a lot. <laughs> uh, it's Don Hugo Salinas Price, former CEO of Electra, uh, one of the most distinguished businessmen in Mexico, who's issuing a warning about fake money.